Out within California after the Great War of 2077, many incredible and terrifying things can be seen that really display where humanity and the world is at this point in time. From the beautiful but haunted casino of the Sierra Madre, to the heavily destroyed patch of land named the Divide that houses some heavily ghoulified creatures named the Marked Men, and even the glamorous New Vegas Strip, all of them have their own stories to be told, with many interesting people housed within them. However, located out within a giant crater lay a research facility that was decades ahead of the rest of the country and most likely the rest of the world, developing some of the latest and greatest equipment that was said to help influence the US's war effort and humanity in general. Now in the year of 2281, this facility is not what it once was, losing pretty much all of the people living there and having parts of its whole facility being overwhelmed by dangerous creatures and individuals. With that said, however, the research facility still continues on with some very questionable scientists running everything, as they continue to expand the technology that was originally in development and send it out into the wider world for unique testing situations. This place would be known to all before the war as the Big Mountain Research Facility, but now after the war is known as the Big Empty. So what is this research facility? What was its purpose? What has happened over the years here? And what technology has it developed in its time? Well, in today's episode, we will be exploring the whole story behind this incredible area and the scientists that inhabit it, as well as the revolutionary technology that it has created and helped other settlements expand over the years. And speaking of revolutionary technology that helps you stand out, that brings us perfectly to this week's sponsor, AMD, who have partnered with Starfield for a unique bundle just for you, my amazing viewers. As you know, Starfield is now the most anticipated game of 2023, and if, like me, you want to experience Starfield with the best graphics, then you'll be pleased to know that AMD, as Starfield's exclusive PC partner, is offering Starfield for free when you purchase any of their latest AMD 6000 and 7000 series GPUs. AMD's GPUs are immediately prepared for Starfield, allowing you to experience the best graphics, performance, and visuals for the game. The GPUs that AMD produce are also very reasonably priced for what they offer and a great option for any gamer no matter their budget, offering the best FPS per dollar compared with the market competition. This means that if you want to experience Starfield in beautifully crisp 4K with enough VRAM to hoard as many sandwiches on your ship as you want without breaking the bank, then you should check out the brand new AMD RX 7900 XTX. And if you want an even more budget-friendly option, then AMD offer the RX 6800, which still gives you 1440p resolution so that there is little compromise to your graphics experience when you play Starfield. AMD also comes with their latest FSR 2.1, which is helped thanks to their RDNA 3 technology, allowing you to experience not just your free edition of Starfield with silky smooth graphics, but also over 260 available and upcoming games that are FSR compatible. You also get access to AMD's latest adrenaline software, which allows you to customize and have complete control over how you want your graphics to be optimized. Optimized. AMD's offer is particularly great for me as I have used AMD for years, both for gaming and also editing, as it allows for better quality recording of gameplay and faster exporting. And when I've finished my day at work, I can just relax and play a game, knowing that the graphics won't give me a headache and give the most immersive experience I could want. And I can't wait to get stuck into Starfield when it is released with these amazing graphics cards from AMD. So if you want to get your hands on the AMD Radeon 6000 or 7000 series GPU and a free copy of Starfield, then click the link in the description below. So thank you AMD for sponsoring this video. And with all that said, let's get back into the story of the Big Empty. The Big Mountain Research and Development Center was originally built inside a cave system which ran underneath a large mountain peak which was so unique it helped all of those creating it to come up with the name. When creating this grand place it had one sole mission and that was to try and help further the technology and growth of mankind without the worry of government involvement or bureaucrats getting involved in what was going on. Here within the research facility nothing was off limits at all. The scientists could do whatever they wanted as long as it 
it did indeed help with the furthering of the development of mankind, meaning it technically wasn't the most ethical of places to be. With this place finally being set up, it would go on to attract some of the most gifted pre-war scientists who wanted to expand their skills even further and help them become more renowned within their technological fields. With more and more scientists entering the area, the experiments started to take place and like expected, they were extremely unethical. But with all of that said, they were revolutionary, helping the scientists understand more about how humans work and the limits of them. These experiments mainly consisted of human testing utilizing any proud Americans who would volunteer to further the cause, as well as Chinese Americans who had been captured and put in work camps due to the Sino-American War that had kicked off. Unlike the American volunteers, these Chinese Americans did not get the option to turn down the experiments. They were outright forced into it and were most likely a part of the more brutal, questionable experiments that led to many deaths or transformations. Within the big mountain facilities was also a large concentration camp of its own, where they would house these prisoners whilst being safeguarded by lucrative contracts within the US Army. As time went on before the Great War reared its head, budget cuts started happening all over the country due to lack of resources and many other things with the Big Mountain being heavily affected by them. Because of this change in situation, the Big Mountain Research Facility had to improvise and set up new ways in which they could gain funds to continue on their research. Here the owners of the facility would start striking deals with third parties, exchanging experimental technology for money and other more questionable privileges and on top of that would start launching their own operations to help them with their overall goals. Project Hare was the first which was an assassination operation to help them acquire deceased human specimens for their experiments. The targets in question would be non-military targets, but all further information about what happened to acquire them were hidden from anyone outside of the facilities. The other operation was known as Project Burke, which was pretty much the same. However, instead of assassinating targets in this one, they would instead grave rob anyone they felt was a perfect specimen for their experimentation. With these new human bodies, the experiments started going ahead with most being located within the Y0 Research Center in the far north of Big Mountain. But it didn't take long before these experiments went horrifically wrong as the scientists later known as Dr. Klein went on to completely vaporize the mountain above the facilities, leaving all of it within a giant crater and exposed the facility to every passerby. Despite most thinking this would be a horrific thing to happen, the scientists would not be phased in the slightest as they just continued working on trying to further mankind with all of their latest discoveries. Instead, the researchers went on to adapt the new landscape around them to help them further within their research, creating new facilities both above the ground and below, which included an artillery test field and a test town named Bomb Town that was to test the performance of satellite artillery shells and their impact on the land. At this point in time, the exposed research facility was under the leadership of six gifted executives, but unfortunately in this modern day, no one knows their actual names, but they still live under their code names of 08 Boris Dalla Mobius and the administrator Klein, who would join together under the name of the Think Tank. Here they would come together within the center of the facilities in their giant domed building that would be their prize and joy, with their creations located outside of the facilities in their other places. Things such as satellite alloy, next generation hazmat suits, new models of cyber dogs, advanced stealth suits, holograms, and many, many more. But whilst these products were seen as extremely beneficial for humanity and could absolutely help them in their war efforts and day-to-day -day lives, on the side were some more horrific experiments which were a consequence of the heavily unethical tests they were doing on the human and animal subjects. These included the horrific creatures known as the Cazadors, Night Stalkers, Mutagenic Plants, Ambulatory Corpses, Previously Unknown Toxins and other horrific monstrosities. With all of these new creations being made, the Think Tank would sell them on to a wide variety of private parties in exchange for a multitude of different things. The most clear example of this was in the world of the Sierra Madre, where the think tank would gift Frederick Sinclair, the owner, various bits of technology, such as the prototype matter conversion machine and holograms, in return for allowing the Big Mountain Research Facility to use the Sierra Madre as a proving ground to test some of their more horrific creations, such as the extremely hazardous gas that still 
lingers to this day and has turned all of the remaining residents into feral ghost people that still wander the broken streets. Sierra Madre wasn't the only one affected by these weird experiments as the whole town of Hopeville would quickly come to see. Here the think tank would go on to test a meteorological experiment in exchange for some of the revolutionary technology, but as a result of this would be completely wiped off of the map and would later turn into the area known as the Divide, with the think tank once again not really caring about what they had just destroyed. In the end, it was all just useful data. As the Great War was quickly approaching, the researchers of the Big Mountain facility would continue on their experiments unaffected by any political moves or battles taking place. However, life wasn't bliss for them there as heated debates happened with many of the scientists. The most notable one was between Dr. Mobius and Dr. Klein, which resulted in Klein throwing out the sink's personality chips off of the dome's balcony, which led to all of the other scientists going to pick all of the chips up and storing them in a safe facility. Soon after this event took place, the war had officially begun and nuclear weapons had been deployed all over the world, leading to the destruction of most of the USA. This was another test for the scientists of the facility, but also a time of opportunity, as now they could do whatever they wanted without the worry of any external forces, and they can also play around with the new world that was surrounding them. With the world in a devastated way, the researchers would change their direction, but still stick to their overall goal of making humanity better. Mobius during this time turned his attention to the economic situation, trying desperately to predict the post-Holocaust economic system and how it would work going into the future. But the main project that all of them would work on would be preserving themselves to allow them to keep working for years on end and basically become immortal to some extent. Here they would transform the executive members of the think tank into a special brain bot in an experiment that would be aptly named the think tank project. But whilst this project turned out to be an overall success, it changed the executives forever as they saw it as a way to escape death. And because they were all so smart with no one objecting to their ways, they would become far more power hungry, extremely sinister and debauched in the following years after becoming those brain bots. Not long after this experiment, all of the other scientists working under the executive executives started leaving the area in their masses, most likely due to how the rule was changing with the new brain bots becoming more like dictators. As these staff members ventured out into the wasteland, a lot of them were going to be killed by a ton of escaped experiments such as the Night Stalkers, who were becoming more and more out of control throughout the land. Within the think tank itself, Mobius was objecting to what was happening all around him, getting tired of their endless horrible experiments, believing that the world isn't ready for that kind of too far thing taking and also believing his fellow scientists had lost everything that once made them human, especially their empathy and morals. As a result, he would go on to create a repulsive field all around the perimeter of the Big Mountain Research Facility to make sure that no one could walk into the land and be killed by the failed experiments, or most importantly, the think tank scientists could not escape from the area and start destroying the rest of the world around them, knowing full well that his colleagues planned on launching a new experiment on new fertile testing grounds. To make things even worse, for his once friends and colleagues, Mobius would also go on to hack their shells, making it so they forgot large portions of their personality and substitute their names with new ones, helping them become known as the entities such as Zero and Eight. On top of that, he also hacked into all of their databases, changing all of their information within, such as the chronometers, geometers, and cartography programs, ultimately removing all of their sense of time and history, essentially meaning they were husks of their former selves. It didn't even stop there. Mobius would also go on to create tons of things around him to make it so the scientists were fearful from ever venturing outside of the think tank into the wasteland, creating his own robo-scorpions which would consume the intelligence from brains as well as changing different facts about himself, making them believe he was exiled for crimes that were so barbaric and heinous to even be written down for recorded memory, as well as tricking them into thinking that the big mountain is all that remains within the world. 
world and nothing else is outside their precious facility. Thanks to all of those things put in place, the brain bots within the think tank became mangled, disjointed versions of his once colleagues. But this didn't fully sit right with Mobius as he remembered the good times working with them. In response to these feelings, Mobius would erase some parts of his own memory to make sure he could sleep at night with a healthy conscience, as well as the knowledge of some of the creations he had made before the war, such as the Robo Scorpion. After removing these specific memories, he would go on to later move into the X-42 Robo Warehouse facility, where he would go on to recreate the Robo Scorpion, taking inspiration from the Rad Scorpions he had witnessed wandering into the Big Mountain. This new version of the Robo Scorpion would feature a tail-mounted energy bolt blaster, an eye camera system that allowed him to see everything they saw, a remote control and public address system which helped him ultimately rule over the whole of the Big Mountain facility. Now fully located in this area, Mobius would go on to name it the Forbidden Zone to make sure no one entered it and convince the other scientists that the place was completely off limits and it should not be spoken of at all. But despite everything Mobius had set up to make sure the scientists never left the think tank, he was still fearful that the radar fence would fail and they would eventually escape out into the wasteland. And so on top of all of that he had put in place, he would also set up a repeating threat message that was to be broadcast only to the think tank with the aim of instilling fear into them and prompt them to focus on retrieving technologies that would allow them to depose Morbius. After all of this happening, the big mountain essentially fell silent and simply became an area filled with an increasingly demented, insane struggle between Mobius and the think tank, with the brain bots staying inside their dome, completely fearful of their self-appointed warden and his brain-eating scorpions. Whilst this was going on, a few visitors did venture towards the large crater that the big mountain was housed in, but this crater was perfect camouflage for the facility as the ridges were so high no one could see over them and most believed it was just an end result of a massive nuclear explosion. And with that thinking, they completely avoided it, believing it would be filled with either tons of radiation or terrifying creatures, which technically they weren't wrong in that thinking. Those who did choose to look into the crater, however, would go on to disappear forever, being grabbed by the many different robots roaming the facility and would go on to be lobotomized by the think tank to use them as organic automata to help keep the decaying facility intact and also ward off any scavengers who wanted to raid the facility for parts. Word did spread all over the wasteland about this mysterious place within a giant crater with many believing it to be completely void of all of life, helping it get the name of the Big Empty, a place where nothing exists. With these stories spreading all over the land, it would scare away all traders and caravans going close to the area, redirecting them between the Boneyard and New Vegas, something that would massively benefit Caesar's Legion after the first battle of Hoover Dam. With all of that said, however, some had heard of the benefits of the Big Empty and what it had been up to before the war and after, and how the technology within could help them, and because of that, were willing to take the risk to see what was happening within. For the think tank, they were about to encounter some new visitors, and despite doing everything to get rid of them, they would survive and explore everything they had created in their time there. After a critical battle within the Helios 1 power station, the Brotherhood would be completely devastated and their leader, Father Elijah, would abandon them to find a way to hit back against the NCR, who he despised with a passion. Whilst completely on his own, Elijah would venture all over the wasteland in search of weapons that could completely devastate the NCR once and for all, to then create his new formation of the Brotherhood of Steel. On his travels, Elijah would go on to locate the Big Empty and venture inside it to scour all of its technologies that would be of use to him in his battles. At this same time, he would learn about the casino of the Sierra Madre from Ulysses and the glory it offered to those who ventured in. And with that information motivated him even more to grab as much equipment as possible to crack the extremely valuable vault located at the bottom of the casino. The most terrifying thing Elijah came to witness in his time within the Big Empty was the old concentration camp, which contained bodies with detainment collars 
colors on them. Elijah would grab these colors and would play around with them to see what they did and how he could use them for his overall goal. On top of that, he also found a hollow rifle prototype that he would use as his personal weapon and continue to experiment on during his travels. For the courier known as Ulysses, he also arrived at the Big Empty, but by complete accident. After following weather patterns from the Divide, witnessing storms that were extremely violent and man-made, not natural in the slightest. The final person to enter the facility was an assassin of the Brotherhood of Steel who had been betrayed by Father Elijah and was now tasked with killing him for the crimes he had committed against the Brotherhood of Steel. For both Elijah and Ulysses, they were both skilled enough and smart enough to get the better of their surroundings and were able to escape completely unharmed. But sadly for the assassin known as Christine, she would not be so lucky as she would be captured by the big empty robots following a disastrous skirmish at Little Yangtze, trying to take out Father Elijah. Elijah would use all of the survivors of this place to attack her, using their collared selves to run into battle and explode them as if they were human bombs. And once she was collected by the robots, would be taken to the Y-17 medical facility and experimented on by some Mr. Orderlies, a Y-17 trauma override harness and a Mark 9 autodoc. Being experimented on massively, Christine would suffer from permanent brain damage, ruining her ability to read and write fluently. Ulysses would go on to venture into the medical facility in his time there and would ultimately save Christine from certain death, destroying all of the things experimenting on her and nursing her back to health within his camp in the Big Empty. During his time nursing her back to health, Ulysses would discuss philosophy with her, as well as the overall desire to venture into the central dome and speak with the crazy brain bots known as the Think Tank. Whilst this was all going on, Elijah would do what Ulysses wanted to do whilst in the Big Empty, and would venture into the dome and speak to the Think Tank himself. Here he would question their worldviews, and suddenly the brain bots would start questioning everything they once knew, bringing brand new ideas into their mind. After this meeting, this would be where Ulysses and Elijah would meet and would discuss everything he had found in the Sierra Madre, prompting Elijah to start venturing to it. And after this, Ulysses went to the think tank as well and spoke with them, more specifically with Dr. Klein, who questioned everything about the history of the world. But this would trigger a vital moment in all of this, where Ulysses would ask, who are you that you do not know your own history, while showing them the old world flag. And after that, suddenly, the think tank remembered everything about their past lives, with crucial bits of information going back to them, such as the world is in fact populated and the world of the Big Empty is not alone. It was a world filled with ideas and possibilities ready for experimentation. But the more Dr. Klein thought about this, he realized it was far too dangerous to think about as it reminded him of too many past events. And because of that, he would go on to subsequently delete it from his memory once again. After what he considered a success meeting, Ulysses returned back to his camp to say a final goodbye to Christine, as well as passing on all of the information she needed to find Elijah, and ventured into the Divide to see what else he could find there. With all three of them now out of the Big Empty, the Think Tank would be left to their own accord once again, however they had been left with a parting gift thanks to the actions of Elijah, who did not want to be followed. Before he left, he would be chased down by both Dr. Zero and Dr. Eight, but not before Elijah would hack both of them with within minutes, permanently damaging Eight's voice module as well as leaving destruction in his wake. With that all done, Father Elijah finally left for the Sierra Madre on a cargo train, crashing the remaining trains within the facility in the tunnels leading out to make sure no one could follow him on his travels. Mobius during all of this would watch the encounters between the think tank Ulysses, Elijah and Christine but realized there was nothing he could do personally. And because of this, he just became more worried about the future actions of the think tank. But for now, the think tank were left on their own, with Mobius just watching and waiting for the next event to trigger. During this time, the brain bots would go on to install a pacification field in the think tank central area, preventing anyone without a brain to have hostile impulses. That conversation with Ulysses really made them all think. Despite removing a lot of the information about the old world, the brain bots really wanted to see what was really going on out there in the wider wasteland. And because of that curiosity, would go on to send out a satellite prototype which would go on to crash within the Mojave drive-in in the Mojave wasteland. Whilst laying here, it would emit a signal in the form of a jazz theme named Mysterious Broadcast that if anyone were to follow its signal would find that satellite and when touching it 
would be teleported to the Big Empty to come face to face with the think tank. This would happen to one individual simply named the Courier, who would find that satellite and be transported to meet with them. As the Courier was transported there, they would be taken to the sink in preparation to become one of the experiments known as the Lobotomite. However, as they got there, the sink autodoc would discover the bullet in their cranium that was put there by Benny a few weeks back, and instead of lobotomizing them, would in fact change its programming to fix the problem and conduct a cranial extraction program. During this process, however, the autodoc also noticed that they needed a spine and heart replacement for the process to work, and would replace their organic organs with synthetic ones. Now in the possession of the courier, the think tank would grab their brain's procedural data and be granted the knowledge to modify their cranial selves into hosts to slip past the radar fence and once and for all, leave their captivity of the Big Empty. But as the think tank started the extract process, they would instead be turned into bickering fools who would just start arguing amongst themselves. Witnessing all of this happen once again, Mobius saw the perfect opportunity to steal the courier's brain and with its knowledge, led them to the Forbidden Zone. But now came a choice for the courier with the only option really being to side with the think tank to make sure their brain remained intact. But siding with the think tank would mean taking out Mobius, as well as retrieving three pieces of technology that would change the future of the Big Empty forever. Overall, the history of the Big Empty has been filled with many horrors. What started as an honourable project to further mankind turned into a place where ethics and humanity went out the window, creating some experiments that were absolutely horrific to witness and would kill anyone in their way. The scientists that still inhabit this facility, even now in the post-apocalyptic world, have become sadistic creatures with no sense of their human selves present at all, with one of them essentially being an insane big brother presence watching over everyone and everything going on, trying to make sure his once co-workers don't destroy all of the land around them in the name of experimentation. What the future holds for this facility would be solely down to the actions of the courier, but it's safe to say everything that had been developed here has played a huge part in the shaping of the world around them. Most of the time for the worst, with Sierra Madre and the Divide being prime examples of this. And if these scientists did get out of the area, who knows what further destruction they would bring on the land. But for now, this has been the story of the technical marvel built out within the desert of California. This has been the story of the big mountain research facility now known as the Big Empty. I want to say a big thank you for watching this video and a huge thank you to my patrons who allow me to make them on a regular basis, including my small fishes, my big fishes, Anthony, Arto, Krem, Greg, and Last Persona user, my YouTube channel, Wise Ones, Video Gamer 75, Sith Lord 906, A Frosty Vodka, and Juan Vata. I hope I'm saying that right. My sharks, Jason X117, Alfred Correa, and Wow Such Gaming, and my Megalodons, Chernobyl Stalker, Hazy Thoughts, Rhodesy, and Sinus. But that is all for now. Thank you for watching again. If you want to support this channel all of the links are down below where you can get early access and screenshots of my footage collected as well as some merch and if you want more lore videos check out my playlist below and also check out my audio only versions of these episodes on your selected podcast app such as spotify and apple music also a big thanks to amd for sponsoring this video all the links are posted down below so please check it out if you want to upgrade your pc and also get a free copy of starfield which i am so excited for and with all of that said, I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.